I'm Gail Irwin, and I'd like to read uh, to you today a story based on the parable of Nathan the Wise, written by Gotthold Lessing in 1779. In an ancient kingdom near the great desert, there lived a mighty king. Because he was a fine soldier, he won many battles. Because he was wise, he didn't kill his enemies, he made alliances and brought them into his kingdom. He married a princess from another country, and they had three sons, David, John, and Zaid. As they grew up, the king watched his sons each find different beliefs. David was a Jew, John was a Christian, and Zaid was a Muslim. This prompted many heated arguments at the royal dinner table. The queen would look on with a worried expression shaking her head. It was the custom in this kingdom for the king to wear a special ring, inlaid with precious gems and made of the finest gold. It was the tradition for each king, as he was dying, to give the ring to whoever he chose to be the next king. Now, the king was a very strong man, but eventually he developed a limp. Soon there was a crook in his back, and finally he needed a cane to walk, so he preferred to sit. One evening, he stayed in the garden too long and caught a cold. He sneezed and coughed and finally was very sick indeed. He knew at last that he was dying. I'm afraid my time is near he said. The queen was very upset. Boys, she said to her three sons, haven't you been looking after your father? David, John, and Zaid looked at each other accusingly. The king summoned his jeweler to come to him in secret. The old woman came. She was sad to see the king in such bad shape. It was time for him to choose his successor and give him the royal's ring. No problem, said the jeweler. Just pick the oldest son. That's what all the kings have done for a hundred years. True, said the king. But the problem is, all three of my sons are noble, kind, smart, respectful, wise, and brave. Not to mention good looking. David is the oldest. He's organized, an excellent manager, hardworking, and he's never late to a meeting. But then there's John, who's such an idealist. He's always helping others, all compassion and kindness. And Zaid is quick, athletic, intellectual, brave, and a real leader of men. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to make two copies of the ruler's ring. They must be exactly alike, okay? I'm not getting any younger, sire, and my hands tend to shake, but I'll do my best, said the jeweler. Great, said the king. Can you get right on that? I'm not feeling any better. So the jeweler got to work. She worked at warp speed since she knew the king was fading fast. She brought the three rings to the king and he was delighted. They were exactly alike. He couldn't tell which one was the original, but he knew he couldn't waste any time. He called the queen who sadly fluffed up his pillow and summoned David to bid farewell to his father. When David came, the king said, my son, I have loved having you by my side. You are a good son, but more than that, you are the most honorable, compassionate, brave, wise, and noble person in the kingdom. Take this ring with my love and go forth. Glory be to him who has control of all things. To him shall you all be recalled. Then the queen summoned John who took his father's hand and wept. The king said to him, My son, I have loved having you by my side. You are a good son, but more than that, you are the most honorable, compassionate, brave, wise, and noble person in the kingdom. 
Take this ring with my love and go forth. Glory be to him who has control of all things. To him shall you all be recalled. After that, the queen brought in Zaid, the youngest son, who knelt beside the king's bed. And the king told him the same thing he had told his brothers. Each son had a ruler's ring. The king turned to his queen. He said, that went well, and he died. The whole country mourned for the king, and as the funeral ended, the queen said, Whoever the king has chosen to wear the ruler's ring is now the new king. Your highness, stand now before your subjects. Then David, John, and Zaid all stood up, showing their rings. The crowd was confused. The princes were furious. What's going on, they said. They began pushing each other around. Their friends shouted at each other, and soon a riot was brewing. Finally, their mother said, Hold it! I'm the queen of this household. David, John, Zaid, cease fire. Go to your rooms. We'll take this before the Supreme Justice, the wisest judge around. She'll decide who will be the king. The next day, the three princes and their mother appeared before the wise judge. As the judge looked over the crowd in the public square, she could see each prince was surrounded by supporters, all of them angry. The queen was clearly upset. My poor husband must have lost his marbles. He let that fair and square thing get way out of hand. The wise judge spoke. I will allow each of the princes of this kingdom to plead his case. We will all listen respectfully. First, we will hear from the oldest of the king's sons, David. David stepped forward and said, Thank you, Your Honor. I am a Jew. I should be allowed to rule this kingdom. That is the principal reason that I should be chosen to rule our country. The Jews were the first people to believe in one God. As a matter of fact, God promised that the Jews would own this land. While Christians and Muslims also descend from Abraham, our forefather, the Jews were the first believers who had a personal relationship with God. We talked to God. We argued with God. We were hated for that. We were shunned and even killed. Even so, we follow the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from the mountain. You shall have no gods before me. You shall do the things I command. Swear not falsely. Keep the Sabbath. Honor both your parents. Never take the life of another, nor another's husband or wife. Never steal or bear false witness. And never covet another's possessions. These are the rules I will follow as I rule the country. Then John stood. Being a Christian would make me a good leader. We Christians revere the Ten Commandments, the Law, and the Prophets. We believe that Jews, Christians, and Muslims are all the children of Abraham. But I also believe that Jesus was God's Son, divine and human at the same time. He reached out to the forgotten, the weak, the sick, the lost. He was called the Good Shepherd because he spoke to the woman at the well. He healed the blind man, and he watched over every person like a shepherd guarding his sheep. And when we wandered, he brought us home. If I am chosen king, I will do as Jesus commanded. Love one another as I have loved you. Now Zaid stood. I am a Muslim. We also under honor Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. But we believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the true prophet. We pray five times a day to Allah, turning toward Mecca. Once in our lives, we make a pilgrimage to honor the Kaaba, the holy place built by Abraham and his son Ishmael. Muhammad is our example. He lived 500 years after the time of Jesus. 
He felt that the people had lost their way. Most of them couldn't read or write, and many believed in many gods. He retreated to a cave to pray and had visions of the angel Gabriel, who commanded Muhammad to speak out to the people about the one God, Allah, the most glorious and exalted. As the crowds who listened to him grew, Muhammad was attacked and forced to fight to protect himself and his followers. He would encourage his enemies to learn to read and to unite with others. He preached charity. His words were written in the Quran, which says, We have revealed to you this book so that by their Lord's will, you may lead mankind from darkness to the light. That is what I would try to do if I were king. The wise judge said, you have all made convincing arguments. I agree that we all yearn for a life of meaning. There are many paths to God, many ways to rule, and many doors to open as we live our lives. I have reached a verdict. Would each of our princes stand before the people? The brothers stood. Prince David, Prince John, and Prince Said. You must each acknowledge that there are two other rings and two other rulers. You must respect that. You must remember that. At the same time, you must continue on your own path, guided by the Torah, the Old and New Testament, and the Quran. And you must rule the country together. In the words of Nathan the Wise, find in your hearts an open love without prejudice. The people cheered. David looked at his brothers. So I guess this means we meet every morning bright and early, he said. With brotherly love and respect, said John. And with understanding and lowered voices, said Zaid. The queen smiled proudly at her sons. I've been saying it for years, boys. God is big enough to love us all.